We reached the point in the last episode where we were able to programmatically calculate a multi-asset value at risk in MetaTrader. But now we need to start thinking about how we can put that to use to inform trading decisions. And that's where incremental value at risk comes into play. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. I looked briefly at the concept of incremental value at risk in a previous episode in the series, but that was before we'd covered a lot of the detail of what value at risk is, how it's measured, and what the calculation entails. And so now let's look at incremental value at risk within the context of that new knowledge. So if we think about our ultimate aim here, it's in order to help inform whether different trades should be executed or not, depending on the effect that they have on the risk of the portfolio. So let's look again at a couple of examples that we've covered previously. On the left hand side, we have our fictitious current portfolio. So in this, we have a couple of short positions, Euro dollar and Aussie dollar. And we also have a long position in the S&P 500. And we've seen in previous episodes where we've quantifiably coded the value at risk in order to assess what the existing portfolio risk is. And so let's say that that for this current portfolio is indicated by the blue arrow on the risk scale here. Now, if one of our trading strategies determines that there's an opportunity for a new position, let's say a short position in New Zealand dollar USD, we can then perform an assessment of what the portfolio risk would be if this position was allowed to open. And so in this case, it might increase the risk. Now, depending on the rules that we've implemented and our own individual risk appetite, that might mean that this exceeds what we determine to be an acceptable level of risk. So on the scale here, it's gone above this black dotted line, which represents that threshold. And if that was our rule, that means that we wouldn't be allowed to open up that position and we would cancel any processing of it. Now, in this particular example, because that was a New Zealand dollar USD short trade, if you take a look at the current portfolio, you'll see that we're already holding Euro dollar short and Australian dollar short. And so that additional position would have added to the risk because there will be a positive correlation between that and these existing two positions because they all include holding the US dollar long. So let's return now to the previous risk value that we had. This time, a new proposed position occurs, and it's for a CAD yen short trade. Now we can again assess what the risk would be here, and maybe it moves up slightly, but it doesn't break our predetermined threshold. So if that was the rule that we were using, we could now execute that trade and incorporate this new position into our portfolio. Then there might be an additional signal that arises for a New Zealand dollar USD long trade. Now, if you remember previously, in the first example, this was a short trade, which would have been correlated to Euro dollar and Aussie dollar in our current portfolio. But now that it's a long trade and in the opposite direction, 
that effectively reverses that correlation coefficient and so could have the effect of actually reducing the overall portfolio risk. And in this example, that's exactly what happens. The blue arrow moves down the risk scale. And so, of course, whenever there is a proposed position that reduces risk, it's probably always a good idea to take that. And so in this case, we would accept that new position into our portfolio. Now, it does take a little bit of getting your head around this alternative way of risk management. And you really need to think of risk management as a multi-layered requirement. So an approach that probably most traders take is individual position risk management. So, for example, incorporating risk-based stop losses. But portfolio risk management is really completely different and takes a completely different approach to this. So instead of considering any individual positions, it always looks at the big picture. What is the effect on the overall portfolio? And therefore, what is the risk on the account as a whole, not on any individual positions? That's not to say that you don't need individual position risk in addition. Of course you do. But the whole focus on changing the way we make decisions is completely overhauled by taking this portfolio approach. And of course, both of these will fit into a wider risk management strategy, which will incorporate how these two risk management layers interact with each other and also incorporate maybe other levels of risk management in addition. But it's this portfolio risk management that we're concerned with in this particular series. Now, let's be clear, this is an advanced technique. The vast majority of retail traders will not be taking this type of approach. I'm not saying there won't be some of you out there who are, but generally speaking, this is a technique used by investment banks, used by major hedge funds. But that, of course, is not to say that you can't use it. And indeed, I've provided all of the code necessary for you to consider implementing this into your own processes. And just for some extra clarity here, when you're thinking about individual position risk through stop losses, you can, for example, set your stop loss level and then adjust your position size in order to incur a particular percentage of risk per trade. So that might be 1% per trade or 0.5% per trade or whatever it is that you feel comfortable in line with your own risk appetite. But portfolio risk looks at all positions simultaneously. And as we've seen in previous episodes, this has to involve measuring the correlation between each and every one of those positions. Because if you have a highly correlated portfolio, then that poses a huge risk because if the market then moves against you strongly, all of the positions will pretty much move in the same direction. But there are additional factors, and we've also covered these, such as the volatility of individual assets. Obviously, the more volatile an asset is, the faster and more aggressively it's likely to move either in your favour or against you. And so I've shown you in previous episodes how this volatility factor can be incorporated into those risk calculations. And then finally, of course, the relative weights of each of the positions is also a critical factor in the calculations. But again, this has been included in those portfolio standard deviation calculations that I've explained and showed you how to code for MetaTrader. And so now we're in that position where we can use that analysis to help to inform decisions that we make. In other words, is a trade allowed or not? Or maybe we need to adjust a position size in order to allow it. And of course, by managing risk in this way, 
the ultimate objective is to reduce the number of significant drawdowns that we see from events when the market does go against a correlated portfolio in order to produce a much smoother equity curve like the example that you can see on the right here. And of course, associated to that will be an improvement in the various metrics that you use to measure performance. So that's a recap of the detail behind what we're trying to achieve. And so in the next episode, we'll actually code this incremental value at risk. And so that blue arrow and that risk scale can be quantifiably used within the MetaTrader platform. Then, if you remember in the following episode, I'm going to show you how you can take this MQL5 code and make that usable within a MetaTrader 4 environment. And that will conclude the discussions that we've been having on value at risk and using this type of analysis to help inform our decisions. But the series doesn't finish there. Before I complete this, I also want to cover a technique known as the efficient frontier. And this looks at risk in exactly the same way that we have done by looking at the portfolio standard deviation, but also incorporates the concepts of expected return. Because it's not all about managing risk. And what the efficient frontier does is combine those two factors to give us the optimal information about how to manage our portfolio. And indeed, that's why this efficient frontier is a fundamental component of what's now known as modern portfolio theory. Now, before you go, if you want to find out more information about what Darwin X does and the kind of services that we provide to traders just like you, then you can click on the link at the bottom right here. But now, until next time, trade safe.